So glad to be here in the name of Jesus. Yes. Another Sunday afternoon where we come to lift up the name of Jesus. I am Apostle Dr. Donald Gomez. And I am Bishop Dennis Manning. And we are the pastors of love of Jesus delivered to them to the Sustainable Community Church. Lord, we're going to get started in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour, Lord. We thank just you. want to lift you up. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for the nice weather, God. Mm-hmm. Not just the S, the S U N. We thank you for the S O N who died on the cross for our sins and our iniquities, God. We just lift you up, our Holy Ghost, you are welcome. Use us for your glory. Have your way today, God. Take us down into the storehouse. Bring us up into the old into the new testament. Lord, we love you today. God, we love you today. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Let the church say amen. 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 Our opening scripture is coming from the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight it is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Amen. Amen. Thanks be unto God for his mighty word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we bear good fruit, we are going to prosper. Hallelujah. As long as we walk right before him, as long as we are pleasing in the sight of God, we do what he has called us to do. And we abide by his law and meditate. On his word, day and night, we shall prosper. Somebody say, I will prosper. I will prosper. Say it for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. We ought to get excited about the good things of Jesus. We ought to get excited about his word. Hallelujah. Because that's one thing that is going to always go forth and do what it needs to do. God's word. It will not return void unto him. What it is set out to do, it will do it. In Jesus' name. Once again, we welcome you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Why don't you go ahead and click that like button and that share button. Be the social media evangelist. Let somebody else have the opportunity to hear the word of God so that it can meet them where they need to be met. We thank God for each and every person that is a part of this ministry. If you're congregants, if you're well-wishers, supporters, we just say thank you. Thank you for just standing in the gap and lifting us up in prayer. Thank you for your well wishes, your positive energy. Thank you for giving in and sowing seed into the good ground of this ministry, knowing that God is going to bless you beyond what you can think, imagine, or believe. And we just want to say thank you. We just want to say keep on doing what God has called you to do to be a help to this ministry. Uh, you know, in the book of Malachi, the word lets us know that we can, he tells us, God tells us, well, come on, let me prove myself to you. Just go to do what I've asked you to do. Make sure that the storehouse is filled. When you do this, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing wherein you will not have enough room to receive. I don't know about you, but like David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed out begging bread. As long as you are a part of God's program, he will definitely make sure that you are a part of his. Amen? Amen. Glory be to his name. Uh, when we get into the good ground here of love of Jesus delivered, we have what we call our confession of faith because we believe that there is power in the tongue. Life and death is in the tongue. And when we speak life over our finances, when we speak life over our projects and our plans, we know that God is going to make sure that he will complete the good work that he has begun in each and every one of us. Therefore, we say our confession of faith and it reads as thus. Heavenly Father, we profess this day to you that we have come into the inheritance that you swore to give us. We are in the land which you provided for us in Christ Jesus, the kingdom of Almighty God. We were sinners serving Satan. He was our God, but we called upon the name of Jesus, and he heard our cry and delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of your dear Son. Jesus, as our Lord and High Priest, we bring the first fruits of our income to you that we may worship the Lord our God with them. Father, we rejoice in all the good which you have given to us and our household. We have heard your voice and have done according to all you have commanded us. Because you have given us this ability to get wealth, to establish your kingdom, we sow these seeds of faith into the good ground of the love of Jesus, Deliverance Evangelistic Center Community Church. Thank you for raising us up as laborers 
able to fulfill our destiny here in North New Jersey and abroad according to your plans and purposes. Now, Father, as you look down from your holy habitation in heaven to bless us as you said in your word, we believe that now we receive those blessings according to your word. This is our confession of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We have our vision that we make sure that we keep before us here in the ministry because in the book of Habakkuk it says, write the vision, make it plain so those that read it will run with it. And we are running with God, with what God has called us to do for this time and for this season. And the only thing that we want to make sure is that we keep this vision before us so that we can continue to run on to see what the end is going to be. And our vision reads as thus. We will continue to work in fellowship with kingdom building ministries that have the same like minds of godly principles and precepts. We are a community with global aspirations. We will reach out to our immediate community and offer services that will enhance our present environment and others throughout the world. We will reach souls and invite them into the kingdom to become covenant partners. We will encourage our youth, young adults, middle aged and elderly to pursue after their assignments with uh, assignments designed by the everlasting Father. We will show forth the agape love of our Savior one toward another. We will sharpen and encourage each other to run this race with zeal, tenacity, peace and joy infused by the power of the divine spirit. We declare, decree and prophesy that we are the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Have good health, wealth, success, divine opportunities and appointments, positive growth and development, irrefutable loving relationships within families, strong power couple marriages, accountable singles with great integrity, financial savviness, witty ideas and inventions, and the ability to cheerfully give and sow seed into good ground, expecting increase in return, and continued blessings to abundantly flow into our lives. We will grow and sustain what the Heavenly Father has given us to do. We will be the fulfillment of His promises because we are destined to win. Come on, somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are celebrating uh, uh, this, which is March, which is Women's History Month. I would just like to salute my late mother, the um, evangelist, Ailey Patricia Nichols. She was the first lady of deliverance evangelistic center, the wife of my father, the mother of his children, and I just thank God for her because she touched so many lives while she was here on earth. She did the work of a missionary, she did the work of the evangelist, and she also had opened up uh, a school, a uh, daycare center, and then um, classes up to uh, second grade for the purpose of educating our students here in the uh, area of Clinton Hills, and she touched many lives through the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God blessed her with while she was here on this world. And I salute her and I, I just want her name to be remembered because if it were not for her standing by my father's side uh, down through the years when uh, they started in this ministry, a lot would have gone to naught. You know, sometimes we look at a person or we look at a figure and we think like, wow, that person is amazing, but we don't know who's standing behind them. And my mother was a praying woman and my mother was an encouraging woman. She was a supportive woman to my father, the late Apostle Ralph G. Shimon Nickel. So I salute her um, as we start celebrating this uh, Women's Month. And we will be speaking every month on a great woman that has made some type of contribution to uh, the world. We will be uh, acknowledging them. And so today, I acknowledge Aileen Patricia Nickel. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, our Sunday service is 1.30 on Sundays. Uh, we are in person. You are welcome to join us here at 826 South 10th Street in North New Jersey. We're also on, of course, Facebook Live. Uh, for those of you who would like to join, once again, just tune in at 1.30 p.m. That's every Sunday. Uh, we just want you to know we are here lifting up the name of Jesus. We haven't stopped. This ministry was founded by the late Apostle Arturo Skinner. Then it was overseen um, uh, by Apostle Rocky Shema Nickel. And we are still here. We are still here lifting up the blood stained banner. I saw something. I just got to mention it really quick before I forget it. Someone um, post something. Somebody snatched something off of a pasta, um, excuse me, off of a um, pasta. Speaking stuff off of Prophet Jenkins' wall, 
And, um, you know, first and foremost, I just, you know, etiquette, they tell you on Facebook, whenever you take somebody's pictures or things of that nature, you need to ask to be tagged. That's the proper thing to do because it's just like stealing it. Um, going through my doctoral co co uh, courses, they always say that you need to make sure that you cite the person who you retrieve information from, whether it's words, like it's a citation, whether it's art, uh, whatever it is, if it wasn't created by you, you ask permission to use it or to repost it. But nonetheless, someone posted something and said, I, I miss these times, and it was a picture of my father praying, and uh, we they were in the temple. And uh, you can see through the picture, people were being touched by God. And I just want to say this. Like I said, behind every individual, there's a group, there's a team of people. And they are ones that are supporting and making things work the way you see them work. What, you, what the audience sees is the outer portion of the work. But the team behind the scenes, they're the ones that's really putting their hands to the plow and getting things done. And so I just want to say, because I know times are changing, things are different. And, uh, you know, people say, I wish things would go back. And I, it's sad to say, it's not going to go back. Things haven't even gone back to the way when Jesus did things when he was here on the earth. Because every dispensation has a different person. Every dispensation has a different skill set, ability, and anointing to do the work of the Heavenly Father. But I do need to say this. For those of us who want uh, the move of God to happen, you've got to get on one accord. Amen. The body of Christ is so divided right now. People, people are in a mindset. They waiting to see a show. God is not a show. He's a movement. He, he, he causes for things to happen in the atmosphere according to the energy, according to the, uh, the, the uh, uh, reciprocation of prayer and praise and honoring him and us coming together on one accord. We got to get on one accord. If we want to see the move of God, we've got this. First and foremost, don't ever think God stopped moving. It's man. Man has to get into the mindset of wanting to work together, putting down denominations, putting down competition, jealousy, animosity, putting those things to the side and saying that souls out here still need to know who Jesus is. Souls out here are still lost. They may think they know, but they don't know like they need to know who Jesus is. And the only way that's going to happen is when the church gets on one accord. When we get on one accord, they will know us by our love. So those of you who are praying for the movement of God, but those of you who are saying, Lord, don't say, Lord, I wish it was like it. You say, Lord, do a new thing. Come up in here and blow that a fresh anointing. Come on, fresh fire from on high. Do a new thing. That's the prayer we should be praying. And when we pray, put some feet to our prayer. And let's come together. And worship the Lord in spirit and in truth together. Getting on one accord, just like they were in the upper room. What happened? The fire fell from on high. And they were endued from the power from on high, filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the church multiplied. Come on, saints, let's get on one accord. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Jesus. Father, you are the potter. I am but the clay. Give me your divine words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. I want somebody to put your hands together.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Despite whatever is going on around you, I want you to be encouraged. And I say that often because this is a season where people need to be encouraged. People need to know that God is greater than any obstacle. God is greater than any problem. And that he is a God that he will not fail. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And we have to stand on the promises of Jesus knowing that we are going to make it. Because the race is not given to the swift, but to those who endure to the end. And if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, He's going to make sure that you need the endurance that you need to get to the end of the finish line. And I tell you this, it's not over until God says it's over. It's not over until God says it is over. We were talking on Thursday night about the battle belonging to God. Some of us, we are putting ourselves through some unnecessary feats because we will not cast our cares upon him and leave them there, knowing that the battle is not ours, but it belongs to the Lord. And I'm here to encourage you on this Sunday afternoon that God wants you to know that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to feel as if all is lost. He wants you to know that he is there. And I'm going to keep on saying that, keep on saying that, because a lot of people think that when, when sickness hit, when infirmity hit, when, when uh, 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 you have problems in your finances, we hear about rumors of war. People get this spirit of fear, but I want you to know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sign mind. Remember, for those of us who walk with Christ Jesus, we are in this world, but we are not of it. Therefore, these things that are going on around us, it's not for us to become afraid. It's for us to look up to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help is coming from the Lord. It is time for us to draw nigh. It is time for us to go into our prayer. It is time for us to fast. It is time for us to read the word. This is no time to become afraid or fearful. I'm going to tell you why. If you turn to the book of Isaiah 41 and 10, it says Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God has you in the palm of his hand. You don't have anything to be afraid of. Don't be dismayed. This spirit of oppression and depression is starting to hit people of God. And it's starting people that you once seen walking around and they saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, oh, because they lost a the loved one. Oh, because they did something happened on their job. Oh, because maybe they got sick in their body. Let me tell you something. Things are going to happen. What does it say in, 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 in uh, uh, Romans 8.38? Uh, excuse me, Romans 8, 39. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but what? God will deliver us out of them all. And not, not some, but all of them. Let me tell you something. You're going to be hit with things, but that is your time to stand up strong and stand up mighty in your strength and your power through the Holy Ghost. Don't come down from your faith. Let me tell you something. You, I'm saying all of that because I'm preaching to myself. Yes, sickness hit my body. COVID hit my body. Yes, I go to the doctor. Oh, I found this and this, that, and the other. And maybe, you know what? I said, okay, now it's time for my faith. And whatever I preach, it's now time to apply it. See, because a lot of people walk around and they want to preach and they want to say this, that, and the other. But when those afflictions come to your door, how do you handle it? When trials and tribulations meet you face to face, how do you handle it? Yes. You've got to really push into your faith. Yes. You have to really quote these scriptures and you have to remind yourself in Isaiah, the Lord said, fear not. you got to talk to your spirit man so that you'll be able to keep on standing. Why? Because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill your faith. He wants to steal your joy. Yes. But you have to stand strong knowing that God is on your side. He's going to be your strength. He's that strong tower that we can run into and be saved. Whenever you are we call on the name of Jesus. Whenever you feel that, you know what, I can't handle it anymore. Call on the name of Jesus. When you feel that all is at long, call on the name of Jesus. He is a present help in a time of trouble. He's on your side. He's going to be there to help you weather the storm. The storms are like they're raging. The, the, the winds are going to blow. The billows are going to rage. But remember, Jesus was on the ship. And he slept while the storm was, things were talking to him. Bro. He was sleeping. The disciples, they became afraid. What, what's going on? What is that other? Jesus, where's your faith? First of all, if you ride with me, you need to know.
know that everything's going to be all right. Amen. When you are riding with King Jesus, just trust and believe everything is going to be all right. And when Jesus, God, he spoke to the wind, he spoke to the rain, he spoke to the storm, and he said what? Peace, peace. Yes. Let me tell you something. You got to tap into that power. You have to tap into the anointing that He has given us. That when things start to blow your way, when that strong seems like it's beginning to get a little bit too strong, you got to look to Jesus. Know that He is the author and the finisher of your faith, and you got to speak to your storm, and you got to say, "Peace be still." In the name of Jesus. Peace be still and have confidence in the one that you serve. Psalms 34, 18 through 19. The Lord is near to the broken heart and saves the crushed in spirit. He saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Excuse me, I need to correct myself because I went ahead of myself. I got excited. This was Psalms 34, 18, 19. He will deliver you out of them all. Some of us are crushed in our spirit. Some of us are brokenhearted. Some of us feel like, you know, I, 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 I gave my tithes. I prayed. I fasted. But it seems like things are going Just hold on a little bit longer. Just hold on. That's all. Let me tell you something. God is not a God. He's not a man that he should lie. God's not going to lie to you. God, his word, every, if you read every story in the Bible, every person that was ever going through something, when they put their trust in God and called on God, he was there to assist them and to help them. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You call on him, he will be there to assist you. Just hold on a little bit longer. Your release is coming. Your time is coming. Amen. So, so some of us, we want to, Oh, what, why is not working out for me? Ooh, lip drop, face drop. Come on, believers. We got to get out of this, this toddler syndrome. You know, my, my son is three years old. Sometimes you tell him no, he go like this. Put his head down. Lip come out. I'm just like, no, you can't have it right now. Or no, you have to wait. But that's appropriate at a three-year-old. But we got grown folks walking around because God said, wait, you want to talk. Talk to the lip down. Put your head down. No, he's the lifter of our head. When God says no, that just means not right now. When God says no, it probably means I got something better. When God says no, it simply just means that mm, 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 that's not for you. He said, I will supply all of your needs, not your wants, your needs according to his riches and glory. And some of us, we just got to simply learn how to wait. We got to understand that God is what you come on, look at what the Lord has done over your life. How he brought you over. And so now just because this looks a little different, this is a new little situation, you want to feel defeated? No. Remember who you are in Christ. Some of us are broken hearted. And I'm going to say this. When you're going through some things, when you, you feel in a certain way, you, you want empathy. You want compassion. Yesterday was my mother's birthday. She would have been 79 years old. If she was here on planet Earth, she would have been 79 years old. And I really, I, yesterday was, I had to push. And I, you know, because I started thinking what what our relationship had been like as an adult, as, you know, her and this person, you know, 79, I've seen a lot of my friends and their parents are still living, mothers are still living. And, and I just became a little somber in my spirit. But I had to remember the words of my mother. She told me, when life troubles come your way, she's a sinner. Hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow. And I began to sing that song. And I'm not going to lie, the first go around, I didn't feel nothing. Because I was sad. I wanted to smile. Second time I sang it, still ain't nothing happened. The third time I sang it, I felt the release in my spirit. And as I kept just repeating the song over and over and over again, I could feel my spirit being lifted. See, you have to understand that we are still human beings. We're going to feel hurt. Jesus felt hurt. He said to God, Lord, if, please, if you could, please take this cup from me. He cried. He cried so hard that blood came out of his pores. 
I can only imagine. You knowing that you're going to be crucified, beat, thorns on your head, your skin ripped from your body, and you saying, okay, Lord, this is what you want me to do. I'm going to be obedient. But you still, he was human. We are human. Sometimes we feel, that's why this verse said, he's near to the broken body. Sometimes we're going to feel crushed in our spirit. But we got to realize, your afflictions are going to come. But this is the joy of it all. He is going to deliver us out of each and every one of them. Find you a song, find you a scripture, do it. If you gotta walk around the park, do whatever you need to do. But don't stay in a stupor where the enemy will see that little inch and say, Oh, she's crying. Oh, he's sad. Oh, they look a little depressed. Oh, they feel like they've been up and creeps in. And before you know, he done attacked your spirit and he has drawn out all of your joy. Don't let the enemy do it. Just know that you know it. See, a lot of times we walk and we think, oh, I'm saved now, so now I'm a super, I'm a superhuman. I'm a like a superhero. No, 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 no. You won't get hurt. Some people are saying things about you. That's a lot. Sticks and stones, they break my own words, they never have words to hurt. Yes, they do. That's why we have grown people. Who was cursed out by their parents when they were little kids? They still, they still dealing with those issues because words hurt. Words hurt. People say things. You do things for people. You doing it out of the kindness of their heart. They don't appreciate you. Hear them talking about you, trying to sabotage you. You're going to get hurt. But you know that's an affliction as well because it starts working with your body. Hurt works with your body. Your heart starts pitter patting real fast. You feel your your blood pulsing in extra fast. You start getting a little heavy. You know, it all attacks your physical being. That's why you gotta know the word of God to pull you out of that. You can't stay in that kind of condition. You are gonna have a heart attack. Your lymph nodes gonna start feeling that. Your lymph nodes gonna start getting sick and not operating the way it's supposed to operate. That's why the word is there. It's there to help you mentally and physically and spiritually get out of that thing. Don't let it suck you in. Because if you let it suck you in, the devil is going to come in and he's going to do his job. Kill, steal, and destroy. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world. The spirit of the God, of God on the inside of us, when we accept him in, when we start to feel brokenhearted, when our spirit begins to feel crushed, the power of God will come in like a mighty rushing wind and it will lift us up. Allow for God to be the lifter of your head. Don't give it. Let me tell you something. I've been to the hospital. I, I've had a mother who, 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 who died because of cancer. But all the way up until the time that I, the last time I heard her voice, she was encouraging me to hold on to God. Be good. Trust in the Lord. Keep going, God. That was the last message that I heard her speaking to me. And she was on her deathbed. Let me tell you something. This mortal flesh got to do what it got to do. But your spirit, man, when you allow for God to live on the inside of you, it is greater to even push you through when it's your time of death to encourage somebody else. And so to this day, I have a message that I can remind you from a woman of God, my mother, to stand strong. Believe in the power of the Lord. Don't come down. Don't give in. And we have to be the same way. Salvation is the gift that keeps on giving. You're living to live again. Your life here on earth is because somebody else is living and looking at you. You accepted Christ to be an example, to be a disciple, to represent the kingdom of God. It's no time to come down now. You, you know what I saw? When I was looking up, that they had these clips on Facebook and they were saw and you, that they had the people in Ukraine. They were in the subways trying to protect themselves from the bombs. And they were singing hymns. They were praying. See now that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. When affliction comes, when trials and tribulations come, they didn't say, oh, 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 we're gonna die. We gonna, they start singing songs from on high. They started joining together in prayer. And see, that's what we have to be. We have to be true soldiers in the army of the Lord. We got to stand against the wiles of the enemy. And we cannot allow for our spirit, uh, for our, our flesh 
to overcompensate the spirit of God on the inside of us where we feel as if we are hopeless. We are not hopeless. When we are even low in our spirit, God loves us. When we when we are feeling when we feel like you know all these love, God's, God when we feel crushed and when we feel broken, God still loves us. And knowing that God still loves you, that should be enough to bring you out. That should be enough to tell you you are overcome. You are triumphant through Christ Jesus. Things are going to happen. Yes, we gonna feel hurt. We gonna feel sad. And I will say this. Never put yourself in a place where somebody is, is hurting or where somebody is, is down. Be an ear. Sometimes when you don't have nothing to say, the best thing to do is be an ear. And just say, oh, look, you want to pray? Let me tell you something. Two things that make me happy when I'm sad. Prayer and oatmeal. <laughs> I don't know. It's somehow oatmeal that you just... I guess it brings back to my childhood. Because my mother used to make oatmeal real good. My grandma used to make oatmeal. I used to love oatmeal. It was a little pat of butter and some cinnamon. Woo! Yes, a little bit of milk. It just makes you happy. Woo! Somebody said raisins. <laughs> but it made me happy. Prayer and oatmeal. Sometimes when there ain't nothing else to say, just pray for somebody. Then my son, when he hurts himself, he comes to me, he go out, she tells me what the pain is at least in the other. And I look at what happened. Okay, you're gonna be alright, you're gonna look at me. Then I hold it and I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, relieve this pain right now. Touch him and make it old in Jesus' name. He walked right out the door. Okay. And then that is a little plain is than the other. Prayer changes things. Prayer helps people. If you, if you meet somebody and they say, pray for me, pray for them right now, moment. Don't go home and say, I'm going to pray. Pray say, come in. We got two seconds. Come on, let's pray. We're going to pray. And pray right in that moment. Prayer is a positive thing that lifts people's spirit, it lifts attitudes, and it works. When you don't know what else to say, pray. Amen? Amen. God is a, he's a present help, and he will be that present help by using those of us who know who he is to help somebody else. Look at Romans 8. Romans 8. And this is my closing scripture. Romans 8, 38 to 39. But I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Always remember that. So if stuff is going to happen, I remember watching the movie Titanic, and the priest was there, and it was uh, he, uh, those who believed of that faith, they stood with the priest, and while the boat was going down, he was uh, 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 stating, I believe, the Our Father, and he was praying, the boat was going down. Let me tell you something, even because to be absent from the body is what? To be present with the Lord, okay? So even some people say, oh, heal my, my loved one, they're, they're, they're not feeling well. They say, don't you know that in death for a believer, that's healing? When a person dies, and when they leave this earth, and they are saved, and they go to the Heavenly Father, and they're present with the Lord, they're healed. No more pain, no more suffering, no more, no more crying, no more worrying. And see, we have to understand that our ways are not the ways of God, the way we think, the way we try to understand things. But the thing is, God is not a mystery to those of us who believe. When you fast and when you pray and when you seek his faith, God will start revealing things to you wherein you can handle life situations when they're not so great. He will speak to you. See, but the thing is, you have to be proactive. The thing proactive, fast and pray, Seek his face while you can. Don't try to do that when you hit and you ain't walking. You, you, you sit and you got a firm and you can't, you don't have nothing but to say but Jesus. See, but while you got the activity of your lips, while it's yet day, call out to the Lord. Pray. Fill yourself up with the word of God. While you're able to read, while you're able to say, while you're able to comprehend, while your mind is in the right state and place, exercise these things so that when any situation comes your way, you'll be okay. Because you know that it's well with your soul. You know 
that you are already applying his word to stay within your heart so that you will not sin against him. Don't let anything separate you from the love of Christ. Because when, when it's all over, when it's all said and done, believers, our final destination is making heaven our home. And that's the, the that's the, one of the greatest accomplishments that we can ever accomplish as human beings, making heaven our own. So don't give up. Somebody out there, you, you know, um, uh, my my daughter has some friends who got family members that live in the Ukraine, and you know, young people they feel one another. They're very empathetic, and they they feel one another. And it's like you know, your friend is feeling something, even if you're not that close, it becomes a concern. So it's, it's just like, you know, I, I told her, I said, Ailey, it is time to pray. So when we get in the car and I'm driving on the way home, we pray before uh, we get to our school. We pray while we're driving in. And that's the first thing she prays for, the people in Ukraine, those who are going through. She even prays for Russia. She even prays for the president of Russia, that God could get his mind right. She said, oh, Lord, get his mind right. See, that's what the word tells us to do, to pray. A lot of people get things twisted. You know, we can have our opinions and we can have, you know, um, the way we think things should be rolled out or whatever. But at the end of the day, as children of God, he told us to pray without ceasing. Men are to always pray. And that is what we need to do. Stay in a place of prayer. During this time when we're seeing all of these things happening, don't be afraid. No, it's time to draw nigh unto him. Know that you have an assignment to stay in the presence of the Lord, to see his face. Now, I know what some people say, well, I got to go to work. How do do that? Let me tell you something. People find time to do what they want to do. When you get some tea, and I'm not talking about the tea that you sip from a cup. I'm talking about gossip. When people get tea, they jump right on that phone real right ready and quick. But when you say pray, oh, I got to go pick up the cleaner clothes. Or, oh, I got to go grocery shop. Stop it. Treat it the same way. Because we do. Every time we look at the news, you get in the tea. You get in the update of what's happening in this world. In that second, you can pray. In that moment, you, whenever you hear something, when you get an, ear, ear, an earshot of something that's going on, and it's not something that's constructive or positive, you need to pray right there in your spirit. That's what it means to pray without ceasing. We understand that we, it would be lovely to be able to shut in in the temple and close the doors and say, oh, I'm shutting myself in 30 days. God knows what we have to deal with. But no, we got to use common sense. When we become aware of what's going on around us in that moment, like I said, when you see somebody say, pray for me, touch and agree right there in that moment. Because when you go home, you won't forget because you got the stuff you've had with. That's what prayer without ceasing means. Let us stay in a prayerful state of mind. Let us do what God has called us to do. If you're broken hearted, if you're crushed in your spirit, I want to encourage you. Fear not. God has you. If you're feeling pain in your body, if you're going through, you got a message about cancer, you got a, a, a message about uh, uh, some sickness that's going in, breast cancer, all of these things, don't be afraid. God is still with you. He still loves you. I know times get challenging, but don't allow for your spirit man to become discouraged. Be encouraged knowing that God cares and loves you. Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise you and give you honor for your word. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you first and foremost for giving us your son, Jesus. You gave us you gave us Jesus because you loved us so much that you did not want us to perish, but you wanted us to have everlasting life, to spend eternity with you so that you gave your only begotten son. So, Father God, let us see through your son that your love, oh God, your love goes beyond what we can feel or imagine and that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, I know that there are people that are going through certain circumstances and situations and some of them, Father God, they, are, they, they do seem extreme. But Father God, let them know that they can cast their cares upon you. Give them strength and hope, Father God, to know, oh God, that we live to live again. And Father God, that one day this old world is going to pass away. And our soul, oh God, is what's going to continue on. Whether we choose through our activities here on earth, whether it will be in heaven with you or in a damnable hell. So help us, Father God, no matter what we're going through, to remember that you will deliver us out of all of our afflictions. 
that you will help us, O oh God. The only thing that we have to do is humble ourselves, O oh God. Submit unto you for those who are not saved, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you will open up their understanding to receive you into their hearts. Let them know the only thing they have to do is say, Lord, have mercy on my soul. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Save me. Deliver me. And set me free. And Lord, we will do just that. Lord, we pray right now for our brothers and sisters in the Ukraine. Lord Jesus, that those who are singing in the tunnels, those that are praying in the tunnels, Father God, that you will send forth, oh God, your mighty angels to protect them and encamp about them. Father God, we bless you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his wonderful name. Glory to God. Glory to God.